The photograph you can see on the screen is showing something which for a very long time was thought absolutely impossible. There came a point in time when the person in that photograph started to dream that it could be a way to fly from the summit of the Matterhorn at 4,478 meters. It would mean development in technology. It would mean a whole new evolution of the wingsuits. But perhaps in 20 or 30 years, the next generation could achieve this impossible dream. But the person in that photograph is me, the 7th of June, 2014. I have found a way to make that big dream a reality. In my life, passion has always driven me to pursue my goals. Like a child, always getting out of its comfort zone, I just like to push myself towards challenging experiences. This mountain has changed my life. I became a professional snowboarder in 2002, when for the first time I entered and won the world's most extreme freeride competition, the Verbi Extreme. I won it three times and went on to win 11 competitions around the world on the Freeride World Tour. This is why since the age of 15 years old, I started learning and analyzing my technique for finding, reading, and memorizing lines down, down the mountains. It became my passion. With this passion, I was driven to explore ways to stay in the mountains during summer, which would contribute to improving my performance for winter freeride competitions. And I find that Base jumping has the closest parallel with free riding. Both involve hiking up to beautiful mountain top location and exploring a line on the way down. But the parallels between these two disciplines don't end with the search for a mountain line. Like free riding, base jumping is the sport where you're not allowed to make mistakes. So this is why it's absolutely crucially important to stay fully trained and know your limits, because you can't cheat with nature. I was still focusing on my career as a professional freeride snowboarder. So even getting injured was just out of the question. To not get injured, I need to play safe, and this is why I started wingsuit flying in 2001. <laughs> it, was, it was much safer to base jump with a wingsuit, as I could fly away from the wall and open my parachute in the middle of the sky instead of falling along the wall and open my parachute so close to the wall. I spent hours at the top of the cliffs, looking at the birds flying into the wind to understand how I could use the wind to fly better, to get the best timing for my flight and more security. Training on my starts and my opening to have more range for the flight. The more I am in the mountains, the more I'm opening my senses. I'm feeling like an animal fully connected with the elements. I started flying with GPS on my helmet to see my exact performance. The evolution of the glide capacity is just phenomenal. When I started wingsuit flying 20 years ago, <laughs> yesterday, I had a glide of one. I could fly forward one meter by falling one meter flying on a slope of 45 degrees. And today, we tripled that glide, and we can fly on a slope of 18 degrees. I am a free rider, and I'm used to ride down mountains that are steeper than 45 degrees. This means a lot to me. <laughs> 18 degrees, it's nearly flat. <laughs> it means, like, now, I can start drawing lines down mountains 
with my wingsuits that are steeper than 18 degrees and I can still have enough security. For me, base jumping and free riding is not about chasing adrenaline, but it is my way of finding new lines down mountains, a connection with the elements and what is technically possible. The finding the best timing with the best conditions, like on this picture. It's a dance with nature, living fully the present moment. Like an artist, I'm getting inspired by the nature to draw my line. Exploring the nature continues to open my mind and fire my imagination with new possibilities. It's also where I empty my head of any doubts. When people are telling me, your project is crazy, it's impossible. For sure, it looks impossible, otherwise it would be done already. <laughs> I like to remember these beautiful stories my parents were reading to me when I was a kid about these incredible pioneers who thought that it would be possible to fly across the Atlantic Ocean with a plane. And they did succeed in 1919, when everybody thought that they were just crazy. And today, it's normal to take a plane to go around the world. And it's with this mindset that I decided to go to Antarctica to open the first base jump of the southern continent in 2009. But again, people were telling me, but how are you going to climb a 1,000 meter cliff? Bunny minus 35 degrees. I just need to get used to the cold and have the right gear. But how you will fly when in Antarctica, most of the time there is 200 kilometers of wind? Sure. <laughs> but it can be 200 kilometers of wind all the time. I just need that one day with the best conditions. So for sure, our best friend would be time. So we decided, the four of us, to stay in complete autonomy for two months at the bottom of these cliffs on this glacier to get that one day with the right conditions. And we succeed because we we were looking for opportunities instead of obstacles. And this is all about exploration. When in 2009, I decided to climb the east face of the Matterhorn to snowboard down this steep face of 55 degrees, I noticed something. Climbing as, I hi as high as I could, below the nose of the, at the very top, right here. I saw an opportunity right above me, a slight overhang. To most people, an overhang like this would mean an obstacle. But to me, this was the answer to my dream. But at that time, it looked impossible. We needed at least 250 meters vertical drop to have enough security to inflate our wingsuit to fly away from the wall. But after that trip to the Matterhorn, my mind was open to the possibility to fly from new big mountains. But for the moment, the nose of the Matterhorn was not possible because it was maybe 100, 120 meters. So I started to train with this in mind, using GPS on my helmet to see if effectively the new generation of wingsuit will give me this opportunity. As first big mountain opening, 
I looked at Les Drues. As the wall looked bigger than the Matterhorn, and the wall below much steeper. I was so scared to not being strong enough for the climb that I dedicated all my time to be fit enough to reach the summit. I didn't want to be tired at the top to take a crucial decision to jump or not to jump. It took us two days to reach the summit with a short night in a hut and my heavy 15 kilo bag on my back, with all my mountain gear, my parachute, and my wingsuit. I was so focused on the climb that I missed a capital part on the preparation. When I was competing on the Bec des Rosses for the Verbi Extreme, I was not training on the blue slopes. I was training on mountains that were as steep as the Bec des Rosses to make sure that the day of the competition I would be ready to ride such a steep face. As it was my first big mountain opening, I forgot to train on technical exit starts. And when I reached the top, I got scared looking down. I was not ready, and I couldn't jump. I was so angry with myself until I realized this was my best failure. <laughs> it made me able to go back up there and open that flight from the summit of Les Drues with my friend Julien Meyer, with the best preparation we could ever have, but two years later. I've learned from my experiences that there are no limits and no coincidences in life. And this is how I came back to the idea of flying from the summit of the Matterhorn after receiving again a better wingsuit with a better glide and a much better start. I know that passion, determination, preparation and belief can break the limits of human beliefs. In 2014, I was ready for the Matterhorn. I've trained a lot to ensure I would have a good start with my new wingsuit and be ready for a big climb with my friend Julien Meyer. And it took us two days to climb and reach the summit. We had a really short night uh, as the Hernley Hut was closed that year. We had to sleep outside. <laughs> so it means bringing even more gear with us to sleep, eat, and make enough water for all of us. Hervé and Claude Alain joined our exploration. As we were not sure we could find an exit point to fly, we had to make sure that we could come back down safely. They leaded the climb for us to keep our energy for the flight. <laughs> and they were making sure we were not losing too much time at the summit to look for a possible exit point. The conditions were really tough, as it was still a lot of snow on the ridge. Instead of taking us four hours, it took us eight hours. I've pointed three different options at the top to be able to jump from the nose of the Matterhorn. My technical limits with my new wingsuit was a minimum vertical drop of 100 meters. I knew that I could fly over the wall below because it was 55 degrees. I did ride it with my snowboard in 2009. I just need to find a possible exit point with at least 100 meters vertical. I started to go down to the first option with the rope. It didn't look good at all. Then I moved to the second one and I pointed my laser down and I saw 107 meters. <laughs> it's close, but possible. I couldn't believe it. I've been dreaming about this flight for the last five years, and at this point, I was going to realize that this big dream with the best conditions I could ever imagine. No wind, no clouds, and the best people I could ever have around me.
Since I was a child, I was always looking through the window instead of looking into my books. I needed to be out there, and my teacher was always telling me that I should start working if I would like to succeed in life, instead of dreaming about flying and riding. <laughs> I know now that to achieve big goals, it's never easy. But I've worked hard through determination, preparation and belief, and I had to succeed because I find the right opportunities to realize my biggest dreams. And now I fly and ride from the most beautiful mountains in the world. So please, never stop dreaming, because the, even the most impossible dream can become reality. Thank you.